it's Crafty Cassie and today I want to share with you one of my absolute favorite card techniques. Uh, actually it's a couple techniques put together but I love making cards like this and I want to share that with you. So what we're going to start with is some water coloring and we're going to use some embossing techniques we're also going to add a really personal touch with some handwriting and I want to encourage you to join along with me as we make a couple of these cards. So the first thing I'm going to use is watercolor and I have two watercolor pieces of paper that came from a block, which is this aquarelle, well, just this handy little block of watercolor cards. Uh, the brush I am using, I think this particular one, I've used it so long, all the markings went off, but I think it's Heidi Swap. She has a kit of brushes, and one of my other brushes fell apart, but this one has been my favorite watercolor brush. I also have a brush from Ranger, which is another one of my favorites, and this one is a size 6. The watercolors I'm using, I'm going to do one with just Winsor Newton basic watercolors. And this is a Winsor Newton travel set. I think you can get it pretty much anywhere. And I'm not sure which colors I'm going to use yet, but I wish I lived in the United States and there are all these amazing watercolors. And uh, I'd love to try like Jane Davenport and I, I see crafters using these and I'm thinking, Wow. And I go to our crafting store and there is Winsor Newton. So we will use Winsor Newton. I have managed to find a local watercolor, uh, a local artist who makes her own watercolor here in Sweden. And her name is Julia Kay. And I will include her information in the comments or in the description. And she makes these beautiful, almost gouache type watercolors absolutely lovely creamy she sells them in different kits or little sets or you can buy them individually and this set is called the pretty potions set and all the colors are named after potions from harry potter i think uh and my eyesight is oh let's see what this one is this one is i obviously did not pay attention to the potion making class in Harry Potter, what is this one? This red is Polyjuice. And it's a really vibrant, uh, deep red. And there's a gold, which is called Felix. Oh, Felix something. It's a very long name. Felix Felicis. It's this beautiful gold. And... Yeah, so we will see some of these watercolors in action. I've also put some of them in this large tin here. But whatever colors I end up using, I will include those in the descriptions. And whatever watercolors you feel like using, just color away. The point here is I usually like to use one or two colors and get it all nice and messy and beautiful. And I think that's the key word here is messy. With spring coming, I want to try some pinks, so we'll see how this color, I'm going to use this. Emortensia, Emor, someone tell me in the comments what this is called. Um, and for watercolor, I just like to put some on and make it messy. If you have had a rough weekend, you need some time to play with colors and you want to get messy, now is your time. Get messy. You also have to tell me who your favorite watercolor person is. If you if you have favorites, I mean, is, is your favorite Jane Davenport? What's that like? I don't know what color this is. It's very, polyjuice is very dark. Mm. 
I'm not sure I'm crazy about that one. I'm going to add some Sophia, which is a very creamy pink. And I wanted to tone down some of this polyjuice. I don't feel the need to remove the polyjuice, just tone it down some. Let's see. Come on, some more of this. You have to tell me also is it spring where you are or is it summer? I want it to be spring everywhere. And of course, I know that doesn't work because. You know, science and rotation and all that good stuff. But I wish it was spring everywhere. So I'm going to use this color called Rosa. It's also from Julia K. Mmm, I like that one. I don't know if you can see. Oh, and let me know what your favorite color combination is, too. Like, is it pinks? I have a friend, and yeah, you can tell the different colors because that she uses because those are the ones she has to constantly... Oh, I'm out of pink. I need to get some more. I tend to be a blue user. So oh, we are just making it very pretty and messy. I think I use those words interchangeably. So if I say pretty, what I mean is messy and glorious and fun. We want all the colors to kind of blend together. Mm -hmm. So I think I am happy with this one, and I'm going to set it aside. I think part of me wants to just take a spray thing and move all the colors around. I also love it when I do this because then the it becomes a a soft watercolor look as opposed to being able to see the edges or everything sort of blends together. Hmm. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry a little. And then I want to move on to something blue. Oh, I feel like a wedding. Something, what is that? Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. And I want a little bit of the edges here mopped up. Okay, something blue. For this, I will use the Winsor Newton colors so we can see what this is going to go like. Oh, beautiful blue. We've been in the garden throughout the day. It's been fun. It's been tiring. I tried to convince my kid. Okay, there are five things that need to be done. You can rake. You can pull weeds. You can find all these little pebbles. So, so in Sweden, they have this uh, gravel everywhere when it snows because it snows like, you know, nine months out of the year and it's called grus. I don't like the color. I think I'm gonna use maybe gray. So 
I'm blue and green. Ooh, pretty. And uh, they use it for their driveways and for their, you know, on the roads and the pathways. So people can actually walk without killing themselves. Mostly because, so where we live, what happens is everything, it snows. Mm -hmm. It snows a lot. And everybody loves it. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. It's like a winter wonderland. And then it'll stay on the ground and adds more snow throughout a period of, I don't know, six months or so. And towards the end, it'll start getting a little bit warm and it'll melt. And then her and I don't freeze again. Everything will freeze. So there are, there was one year I went and measured, it was over a thick inch, this ice. I mean, and the roads were just covered with it. And so they used this grouse everywhere. And then what happens is in the summertime, your yard is filled with all these little pebble, gravelly things. And so how do you get that up without the lawnmower hating you and plotting revenge on you, you know, like, uh-huh. My existence is horrible and you want to throw stones in my, the yard. But so I tried to convince my son, my son yesterday, why don't you go in the yard and pick up all the little rocks? I mean, who really wants to do that, right? He opted to do the weeding and stuff. And so now we're just going to let it merge and make beautiful colors together. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I like that it's a little light up here. So I hope it stays that way. And now I'm going to pause for a minute because I'm going to dry and nobody likes to hear the heat gun when you're drying, right? So uh, one second and I will be right back. Hello again. Okay. Now we have uh, two cards and here they are. Uh, they pick up the colors. This one is uh, more of a pink magenta-y color. And this one has blues and greens. And I think I like the blues and greens the best. But that's because I, I gravitate towards blues. So what we're going to do now is often I tell people at this point to begin thinking about what type of card they are sending to someone. So are you sending a get well card, a birthday card, a, a congratulation card, a just thinking of you or hey friend i miss you whatever kind of card uh you are thinking of sending and if you don't know that's okay too but i think i'm going to make this one a hey you're the best kind of card and this one a thank you card so the next step is i will take a micron and this one i used Stadler. Uh, this one is a pigment liner 0.3 and I also have a 0.5 in case I'm not happy with the 0.3. Then what I will do, so this one is my thank you card and I'm going to set it aside up here and I know this part may be really really scary but this is the beautiful part of the card. So what I am going to do is I'm, I'm just going to start writing and I do it in cursive so that it can be messy but feel free to do it in print cursive hieroglyphics however you want to do it but this is the personal part of you that you're putting into this card and so i usually just start writing and i say thank you um 
for all the wonderful times you were there for me. Um, the way you encourage me really makes a difference. I'm so happy I have someone like you in my life. And as you see, we're just adding words to it. Uh, you can write whatever. You can be very specific. Thank you for the time you showed up and uh, offered a shoulder to cry on or thank you for the time um you made dinner for my family it meant the world to me whatever it is or it can be very general if you don't know who you're sending this to then keep it very general and say say thank you in ways that are really heartfelt but that could apply to different situations you know in this particular case i'm going to send it to a friend of mine that um always ends up being there even though she's far away so i think i want to say something about that that even though um we are far away from each other Even though we are far away from each other, you still manage to bring light. We're going to cover a lot of this up so people won't be able to see everything that you write. Okay, I am back. I turned it off for a little bit so you wouldn't sit there and watch me write, but I'm finished and I am going to read both of these to you and I hope show you that it, it really doesn't like don't get caught up worrying about what to write just write whatever comes to your head and if it's silly just write thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you like a million times uh, but this card says thank you for all the wonderful times you were there for me the way you encouraged me really makes a difference I'm so happy I have someone like you in my life. Even though we are far away from each other, you still manage to bring light into my life. My life is better because you are in it. See, if I wrote a letter, maybe that all this blends together, but it's okay here. I love all the times we've shared together, and I'm so grateful to have a friend like you. I cannot count the ways you bring that extra touch of love and warmth into my life. So once again, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you. And then this one, this was my, you're the best card. So I wrote, today I thought of you and my day became brighter because you were the best. You're the best friend that has stood by my side, even during tough times. You're the best picker upper I've ever known. You're the best wine and cheese partner in the galaxy. You're the best crafty, messy trier who always inspires me with the courageous way you show up. You're the best sharer of ideas for long talks. You're the best co-conspirator for wild and crazy ideas. You're also the best troubleshooter for getting out of sticky situations. In short, you're pretty amazing and simply one of the best people in the world. Hmm? So that's it. These are my two cards. And now I've done the first two parts, which is the watercolor. Now I've scribbled on them. Now we get to do some fun stenciling so i have picked two stencils the stencil you pick could be anything i've never used this one before so i want to see how it works this is gina k designs 
and it's these lovely fans and oh I always cut off the top of my stencils because it's so much easier than pulling this off and then sticking the stencil back in there so we have this and I don't know how I'm going to use it yet and I think I definitely want the fans on the thank you and this is my other stencil which is beautiful roses from uh, Tim Holtz and again because it's springtime I think I want the roses here and but I'm going to start with the fans for stencils you will need a some sort of I don't even know what this is called like a palette knife that's what it's called you know what I minored in art I know you can't tell that but yeah my art teachers told me all the time I didn't do so well in art school by the way because they would tell me things like yes but what are you trying to say and it would drive me crazy I'm not trying to say anything I just wanted to be beautiful and fun and play and so now we get to pick a, a stencil paste that goes on top. And I have a lot of these Nouveau Glimmer paste only, only because I won one of those little giveaways on Instagram. So if you see those, really do them because sometimes you might win. And I was thinking that I wanted something, I don't know, um, silvery. That's what I wanted. Silver. And I wanted it on a silver backdrop, I think. So, I'm going to go with silver uh, for this. So, this is Nuvo Glimmer Paste. I don't know that it actually has a color. Silver Gem is what it's called. And here you go. If you have these, always keep uh, the lids on. It helps it from drying out. So this top part here is dry. But all the good stuff inside is still usable. And I don't get too specific with this. I think I'm going to do a little bit here and a little bit here. So like here and here. And I'm just going to hold it with my hands. I think I went up higher than I wanted to. But that's okay. And the beauty with this is I never need it to be perfect. It's the whole point is to be messy. Messy, messy. I do want a couple of fans, like full fans, so I can see the whole stencil, but otherwise I don't have any particular plan. Beautiful. I love it. And I'm going to do some on this side too, up here. So now we have stencils all over, which I like. And I'm going to set that aside. And pause this while I clean the stencil. Hello. So with uh, this glimmer paste, it's really, really important to clean it right away so it doesn't form up on your stencil. So with this particular card, this was my You Are The Best card and I want something dark. 
So I'm going to use the, again, the Novo, Nuvo Glimmer. This particular one is called Plum, <laughs> I don't know how to say this word, Plum Spinal, but maybe it's Spinal. I've never, I don't know what a spinal is. Spinal. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? I feel kind of dumb that I don't know what that is. And I think we will stick to the same thing. We'll stick to the two corners. And here I, I uh, oh my God, it's so beautiful. I can go a little bit higher. Oh, I really love this stencil. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. I think this might be my favorite one now. Can you see how beautiful that is? Wow. Really bold colors. Really bold colors. Oh my gosh. Look. Wow. So beautiful. I want it on the top too, but I think on the top I want it to kind of come down a bit. Maybe this. I can hear the birds outside. Oh, I love it. I mean, what is better than crafting and listening to birds outside? And, oh, beautiful. Okay. So, this is my card. And for now, I'm going to set that aside. And we are going to clean. I'm going to pause again just for a moment to go clean my stencil. And then when we come back, we are going to find a sentiment. One Hello. So I am back again. And here is the one card, the pink card. We will call this with the beautiful rose and uh, stencil paste on it. And this one is the other card. And... It looks different now because it was silver and I decided I loved the dark color on this one so much I wanted this stencil to also uh, be dark. So all I did is I took the blue that I had originally used in the watercolor. Ah, it was the Winsor Newton. Uh, this one and that I had used to color. And so I ended up going back in with uh, my brush and coloring it blue and it was actually a lot of fun so now we have both cards and so for this card I am going with this dark red kind of magenta -y wine color I always use the American size cards Card sizes. I cut this a little bit short of five and a half by four and a quarter. This one I will cut down to five and a quarter. I want to keep the top part there. Two, four. Five and a quarter by four. 
and then I think we'll cut from this side. So that is four by five and a quarter. And then everything should fit beautifully on my card. So we will go ahead and put that together. And in the background, you might hear my cat who thinks that we are starving him. Don't know why he thinks that. I think that happens to cats all over the world. I'm going to line it up. I always line up these by the quarter corners. And then if it comes off a little wonky, then I'll just trim it. But that turned out beautiful. And I used to have a TG gun that I absolutely loved. But then suddenly I couldn't find the ATG tape anywhere in Sweden. I mean, it was completely sold out. Like, there was a mad supply issue for ATG tape. And there is this card. So I think we will do the same with this card. We'll just, I want to double check if it's dry. And it looks dry. And for this card, I've chosen this dark blue. Yeah, so now I can't find AT ATG tape. And so what I ended up doing is ordering from Simon Says Stamp. And I ordered like about 30 of these. And now I'm on my staff, so I'm going to have to put a, another order in. And then we'll double check if this is the right size. Perfect. So now we will cut this one down to... Five and a quarter. So I think we'll trim from this side by four. And then I can tape it there. Also beautiful. So now we have two beautiful cards. And now we need to create a sentiment for them. And for the first one, I'm going to use You're the Best. And this is from Ranger Inc. You're the Best. So I'm using my Misty, which this is maybe a travel Misty from 
Tim Holtz. I'm going to line up your the best on the bottom for my thank you card. I'm going to use love from Lizzie and just a really simple thank you. And so I'm going to go ahead and line that up. I'm using the magic cornstarch pouch because who knows what it's really called. But what it does is magic. So to make sure that I don't get embossing powder everywhere. I'm a really clumsy stamper, so I need the Misty. I don't know about anyone else. And then I need my clear embossing powder. So that looks lovely, nice and embossed. I need to clean my stamps and this is a stamp cleaner from Sukunek, I suppose, T-S-U-K-I-N-E-K. This is the best one that I found. I have a couple of the other ones, but none of them work as well as this one does. Now we have our sentiments. For the sentiments, I'm just going to trim them down. save the bits and pieces so I can use for some other sentiment. So this is the hard part for me because I always love layering and so I'll stick it there and think, no, no, it has to go on the, and I think I agree. I think it needs to go there. I also like it when it has a different shape, so I'm going to do an angle. That is the old one. And for this, I will just make it have a very fine border. And trim off.
probably one of the best tips I ever got when starting out is that to have a straight line on something like this, use the large scissors, not the little ones. So I like that. But I'm thinking that we should pop it up. I will use my handy 3D foam squares. Pop it up. So, you're the best car. And then, thank you. I think I will do the same thing. But maybe coming from this direction. I went on the bottom because I knew that I had a straight edge. Don't think I will. I don't think I'll pop it up. I just double sided to you. Nice. I can't believe how awesome they look. Actually, I can't. But. So, these are my two cards. I have a thank you card and you're the best. Using one of my favorite card making techniques. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope you give it a try yourself. And let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Is it the Rose, you're the best, or the fan. Thank you. Which one do you love the most? I can't decide. Thank you. Have a great day.